कोलकान मराठा ऑन्ट्रप्रेनर्स प्रेजेंस वुमेन ऑफ सब्सटेंस गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीवन अ वार्म वेलकम टू यू ऑल टुडे आई एम हियर विद अ न्यू वेबिनार प्रेजेंटेड बाय कोलकान मराठा एंटरप्रेनर्स इन आवर सीरीज वुमेन ऑफ सब्सटेंस First, let me introduce uh, Konkan Maratha entrepreneurs. Who we are? We are initiative of second generation, uh, second generation entrepreneurs and professionals. What do we do? We encourage entrepreneurship within our community. And how do we do that? We provide platform for sharing knowledge and network opportunities for new and existing entrepreneurs. we start with our first webinar in the women of substance series to discuss leading as a woman challenges and opportunities today is teachers day and we have with us dr nilima nai or you may also know her by her maiden name pushpalata dattatrey rani a teacher for almost four decades in different universities and institutes of higher education first let me introduce myself I am Dr. Mansi Sai Desai, residing in Thane, and I am a member of Konkan Maratha Mandal. I have completed my PhD in Pharmaceutical Science from SNDT University, Mumbai. My husband, Dr. Sandeep Sai Desai, is an ophthalmic surgeon. We have our hospital, Lakshmi Jyot Eye Hospital, in Thane. We are blessed with two daughters, Janavi and Mihika. Now today we have with us a very dynamic personality who is very active in all the activities of Konkan Maratha Samaj. She has been working with Shubha Lakshmi Parivar Thani for almost forty-four years. In fact, she is the she. Uh, in fact, she is one of the senior members who have constantly motivated and inspired most of us in general and ladies in particular to grow as a very strong community. we all know her as dilima tai namaste dilima tai namaste mansi we are very happy to have you here today ma'am yeah i uh, happy to i feel humbled with this invitation and thank you organizers for giving me opportunity to unfold my journey yeah uh, what can i say about dr nilima naik she doesn't require a formal introduction Most of us know her very well. She is a daughter of late Dr. Dattatrey Rani and Mrs. S. D. Rani of Halka. She is a very soft-spoken and kind-hearted person when it comes to interacting with people. However, when it comes to work, a very disciplined and supportive teacher and a mentor. She completed B.Sc. Honors from her Pune University, followed by M.Sc. at Penn State University, USA, with research assistantship exactly 50 years back. being the first girl from our community to study abroad after returning from us she worked with mcs affiliated to pune university having moved to mumbai after marriage she worked for mumbai and sndt universities as a lecturer she joined iit bombay as a project scientist in 1984 and later on joined niti in 1986 and retired as dean research after 30 years Her area of interest has been environmental management. She has guided doctoral as well as MTech and MBA students, and has many national and international publications to her credit. She was a member of governing councils of many academic institutes. She was on the board of governors of National Safety Council and was on the State Environmental Appraisal Committee of Maharashtra, appointed by Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change. with such a strong career social and family accomplishments dr nilima naik is truly a woman woman of substance today dr nilima naik will share her views on various opportunities she got and various challenges she faced as a woman while defining her career a warm welcome to this webinar nilima tai thank you mansi for those nice words it is very nice and satisfying feeling to see you youngsters organizing these webinars and disseminating knowledge and information available with our own experts i have attended almost all of these webinars and have learned many things today makes it all the more special for me because it is teachers day teachers day 
i would like to pay my respect to dr radha krishnan and all the teachers world uh, you know in the world yeah much kanchan tum sagalyak namaskar ani tumka sagalyak shikshak dinay dinache shubhechha thank you ma'am for all these kind words so can we start with our discussion tai हो हो अगदी नक्कीच माझ्याकडे खूप क्वेश्चन आहेत तुम्हाला विचारायला सो टेकिंग दिस टॉपिक फर्दर ताई माय फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज परसुईंग फर्दर एज्युकेशन इन युएस इन दोज डेज बाय अ फिमेल वॉज क्वाईट डिफरंट फ्रॉम द मेन स्ट्रीम सो वॉट कॅन यू से ऑन दिस ऍक्च्युली फाईव्ह डिकेड्स अगो इफ यू सी नॉर्मली पेरेंट्स वॉन्टेड टू गेट देअर डॉटर्स एज्युकेटेड टू ग्रॅज्युएशन टू मेक देम रेडी फॉर the inevitable marriage correct nowadays you see mulgi shikli pragati jali boards uh, here and there but attitudes have not really changed much especially in the villages maybe the picture in cities is a little different my parents with four daughters and one son you know they raised us without any gender discrimination and wanted all of us to get highest possible education Uh, so what was your thought process on planning your higher studies well i want to tell you something very interesting at this point uh, which had a lot of impact on my life you won't believe but i went to about 10 schools till i completed my ssc due to my father's uh, job transfers and after ssc also i studied in two colleges of nagpur and pune university and completed my bsc i was quite happy with the msc uh, admission at pune university my father motivated me to apply for admission and assistantship in uh, penn state university because he was doing his phd there and was uh, on deputation under the usda scheme as you know we, all of us know that higher education in us then and now also is very difficult unless you have some financial support mm. my father's salary and the fee structure in the us whether it was then or now would have never been uh, you know matching in uh, in our wildest dreams so i applied for the ms program in an upcoming field of applied health sciences area and fortunately got the research assistantship they used to have two types of uh, assistantships one was teaching and one was research i got the research assistantship thus my journey from pune to penn state began again to in your cities for my post graduation i distinctly remember uh, the air india ticket at that point of time cost us around 6714 rupees i left on 6th of september 1971 by the boeing 747 newly added to air india's fleet so tomorrow is the golden oh, golden jubilee yeah to the us thus my post graduation also got linked with two universities and why i narrated all this is because these different universities schools colleges etc they helped me a lot i did in fact taught me a lot and i uh, you know i i can claim that it helped me a lot in widening my perspective towards life as well as to accept changes very smoothly yeah uh tai tumhi attas bolla ki studying in us is a very costly thing je teva hi hota ata hi ahe so uh, with respect to that i want to ask you one more question can you tell us about the challenges and difficulties that you faced my i when i went to us i was accustomed to the typical indian system of studies but it was very different there because they had continuous evaluation attending classes itself used to involve walking to different buildings in that huge campus mm-hmm. and uh, going to the library regularly was a must and i enjoyed it one thing i can tell you for sure our indian students very work very hard and perform very well there and i feel very proud uh, about it i completed my uh, ms in 2 years but stayed back to attend the graduation ceremony the tuition fee if you ask me my god i had a tuition fee of about uh, not about exactly 700 dollars 
per term and uh, for which luckily because of this assistantship i got a waiver i didn't have to pay that fee and if you calculate about eight uh, terms for a, a two years program then it would be eight times that and then i used oh. to get a stipend of about uh, 230 or so dollars per month for which i had to work for 20 hours a week towards some research now luckily okay. for me this research could be used for my ms dissertation okay now if you compare i was just going through and then if you compare the same university same place same campus and similar course it costs around 8000 to 10000 dollars per term oh. for tuition fee mm. with mm. campus accommodation mm. and also you would need money for sustenance nothing comes free yes true and i'm sure that has also gone much higher in the 50 years that have passed by mm. so another very interesting thing uh, which was uh, in a way a challenge i was uh, bent upon wearing only sarees in fact oh. i wore the first time i wore the saree was when i boarded the plane to go to us very interesting to notice yeah and i uh, throughout my stay there i wore a saree and i had a bindi for which people were very curious they loved the saree and uh, wondered how you know uh, we were wearing it and mm -hmm. more curious about the red spot on my forehead oh mm -hmm. now you can imagine me wearing a saree with all mm -hmm. those winter gadgets on the saree and mm -hmm. the winter shoes mm -hmm. walking in the campus for such a long distance was real challenge but i think i could manage it Mm -hmm. I stayed in the hostel for almost 6 months after my father had left uh, after his phd and uh, there also luckily i was sharing the room uh, with a south indian girl i remember her name was rama dandapani mm -hmm. why i remember so nicely is because mm -hmm. she used to cook mm -hmm. rice and uh, nice sambar mm -hmm. uh, in our, in the common kitchen that we were provided so food also was never a challenge for mm. me when i stayed you got a indian food there also yeah and <laughs> i was cooking for the rest of the time when my father was around so life was you can say study full but not stressful it i am sure this all must have been a very memorable experience for you but again uh, from all this i could uh, see that education in us is really a very costly affair i think yeah, okay Okay, now, uh, now the thing is, uh, Tai, you have told about your thought process, and you also have unfolded your journey from India to US. But then, one question that is coming to my mind is, who, according to you, played a important role in shaping your career? You would have guessed it by now. Of course, my father. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember distinctly, my father wanted me to be a doctor and seek admission. Uh, Uh, to medical college in nagpur where he was serving as a professor in agricultural college even our family doctor we used to have somebody called a family doctor those days now i think that uh, that concept is also almost uh, not there so he also thought that i could become a good doctor but along with the studies i had too many interests like right from learning classical music to art to craft even rangoli you name it and i just wanted to do it and also somehow that craze was there that okay i should appear for drawing exam hindi exam and all sorts of exams and uh, uh, in view of that actually uh, i told my uh, parents because i was very clear about what i didn't want to do in my life and i told my parents that i will not be able to do justice to this profession if i become a doctor because after taking the hippocratic oath attending to a patient in the middle of the night would be not uh, possible would not be possible for me as sleep was very dear to me then and still is so i may from promise my father that some day i would certainly prefix my name with doctor and i did that after so many years and that to after marriage 
दॅट्स व्हेरी दॅट्स व्हेरी इंटरेस्टिंग ताई पण ताई तुम्ही आता बोलता बोलताना एक खूप महत्वाची गोष्ट इथे बोलला अँड दॅट इज रिअली आय मीन इट इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट फॉर ऑल अवर व्ह्युअर्स हु आर लिसनिंग अस एस्पेशली ऑल द यंगस्टर्स हु आर गोईंग नो जस्ट बिगिनिंग दर करिअर पार्ट द थिंग विच यू हॅव सेड इज यू आर व्हेरी क्लिअर ऑन युअर थॉट्स अँड यू नो यू न्यू दॅट टाईम वॉट यू डेंट वॉन्ट टू डू that is very important that is very important for all the youngsters i mean here gosht ahe ji ami tumcha kadu shikayla havi rather because uh, when you start your career if you are clear in your thoughts and you know ki tumhala kay karaychay hai kay nahi karaychay that is very important because then you don't make mistakes and you make right choice so this is this is yeah this is something that everyone should remember this is very important thanks tai evdi mahatvachi advice dila baddal it is it is very uh, good kay karaycha he bahutek sagayna mahit asta pan kay karu nahi he ha that is correct correct tachyamule tachyamule chittat right right so what you said is very very important uh, now ajun ek question hai maza uh, since you have told about your us journey your stay in us तर माझा एक खूप इम्पॉर्टंट क्वेश्चन आहे जो मी सगळ्यांना बघते आजूबाजूला माझ्या बिकॉज नाव पीपल टेन टू गो टू यू एस व्हेरी इझिली एज कम्पेअर टू वॉट यू एज टू हॅपन अँड इन दोज डेज तर मोस्टली जेव्हा लोक जातात यू एस ला दे सेटल देअर दे डोंट कम बॅक पण तुम्ही आलात सो वॉट मोटिवेटेड यू टू कम बॅक टू इंडिया आफ्टर कम्प्लिटिंग युअर एम एस फ्रॉम पेन स्टेट यू एस ए अँड यू डेंट सेटल देअर वॉट वॉज द रिझन actually uh, there were two reasons the first reason was my marriage was fixed okay with my husband yeah. and he had completed his msc at iit bombay and we had planned that he would join me at the same university for phd and he did get the admission but did not get financial aid as in the 80s 70s if you remember or mm-hmm. if you uh, have read it somewhere mm-hmm. physics was perceived as a threat by the us okay so getting admission was not enough because of mm-hmm. the financial implications mm-hmm. and uh, back home people were waiting for the bride to come so mm-hmm. i we got married after i came back mm-hmm. now the second important uh, reason was as you just now mentioned i was very clear in my mind Mm-hmm. about my priorities in life mm-hmm. and uh, actually never thought of settling in the us mm-hmm. so you may ask why because i am most comfortable here in india with all its advantages as well as disadvantages mm-hmm. and even now when i visit my uh, son working in the us i usually come back after 3 months mm-hmm. good that you have rightly said ha huh? uh, well defined priorities i think this is a point that all youngsters should learn again because uh, they should know what is important for them and devote their time accordingly this will definitely help them in shaping their career in a better way so again you have given a very good advice to all the youngsters thank you thank you many more advices are coming here because you have given me the opportunity on teachers yeah. day yes <laughs> advice from a teacher that is well well said yes yes uh now the second uh, my one more question which is coming to my mind is ki tumhi phd kele so always there is uh, after completion of your phd the student always have a tough choice to choose between academic or industry so what do you feel should be the criteria to make this decision i think my simple answer would be that uh, the decision would depend on your instinct and mm-hmm. the circumstances that you are in nothing okay. more than that okay and uh, how easy uh, is it in india to switch careers between the two actually it is not at all easy and okay. more so for the women mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i will answer this question especially with reference to the women are mm-hmm. uh, things are still different for women if they are married or unmarried Mm-hmm. intend to go for a family way or not and uh, with the current situation like where you see with the work hours in private being so long one mm-hmm. needs to think twice or very seriously about the choice mm-hmm. 
unless mm-hmm. it is work from home and in fact i would not want it to be work from home forever because corona has really put us in jail for two years mm-hmm. so it depends mostly on the field you are in and also your priorities yeah you are rightly said this rightly said very true because even today women face lot of difficulties in making their right choice it depends on various conditions i hope this situation will soon change for all the women let's hope for the best uh now again while defining your career many times you come across certain situations where uh, we need some guidance from uh, from someone very close to us who did you turn to for such guidance and how important is a trusted confidant having a confidant is very important in life now this confidant could be anyone friend or sibling older or younger male or female not necessarily your spouse and uh, the confidant is one who can listen to you without being judgmental that's my <laughs> understanding at the same time you as a receiver should be willing to accept the criticism if it is coming from your uh, confidant because it helps you to see things better and move ahead uh, you know without much problem for me my father was always uh, there as a friend philosopher and confidant too okay i even i agree to this i totally agree because uh, i think trusted confident is very important because that person at times help you to make correct decisions yeah. which you are otherwise unable to so having that is really uh, important in your life absolutely now my second uh, another question is Uh, i was just reading your bio data before starting this webinar and i was going through all the things which you have written in your bio data there i saw a big list of papers various papers that you have presented at uh, national and international conferences even i have done that during my educational tenure so do you think presenting your paper on different platforms give you further opportunities and boost your career what are your views on this see when you are presenting uh, your research whether mm-hmm. it is in national all the more uh, in international conferences it helps to reach out to experts and fellow researchers from different mm-hmm. corners of the world if it is an mm-hmm. international conference mm-hmm. and this uh, helps you learn and evolve a lot right. i have chaired sessions in uh, these mm-hmm. conferences and these this uh, uh, particular experience adds to your confidence Mm. and of course adds value to your bio data mm. now i would like to share a very fond memory when you, because you asked about the international conferences mm. um, i uh, attended the first international conference somewhere uh, in uh, uh, 2000 which was in nice france mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, that was uh, in 2000 so about 21 years back Mm-hmm. so that time total number of uh, participants if i recall it was 800 odd from all mm-hmm. corners of the world mm-hmm. and uh, besides one fellow indian i was the only other one and that to a lady in a sari mm-hmm. the presentation was well received and the adulation by people afterwards was simply overwhelming mm-hmm. the photo and uh, video shooters gave me a vip feeling maybe a bollywood star feeling and one more con- i mean advantage of uh, such conferences i would say uh, which i have re- literally capitalized on is mm. that uh, many of these uh, uh, conferences are organized uh, in scenic locations mm. and good season you know the appropriate season mm-hmm. so you can plan well you mm. can get to see places learn about people and their culture and mm. this helps you widen your horizon and approach mm. the in understanding things holistically i repeat mm. understanding things holistically in an integrated very yeah so mm. with this kind of uh, you know uh, mm. chance i have uh, visited about uh, 22 countries with not only my professional of course with personal visits too mm. and um, feel very happy that i have uh, covered all those ancient seven wonders of the world mm. the last one being the great pyramids of uh, egypt just last year before the pandemic 
so you can see my enthusiasm in travel oh that's great that's great because i uh, even i want to see that those great pyramids i don't know when i will get that chance but uh, it is it is very nice to hear that you have already seen it very good jeva mi janar asel na teva mi tumhala call karin vicharayla your experience about it are mi kevai sadaiva tatpar hai ya bata thank you thank you and tai uh, you have uh, mentioned a very important point very interesting point here knowing different people and their culture yes. even i feel this allows you to be more open accepting and tolerant in your life so this is very important yeah uh see na now uh, till now we have been talking about your educational uh, journey now i am interested to know about your professional journey as well so can we uh, start a uh, discussion on this sure yeah so uh, let's talk something about niti uh, national institute of industrial engineering is one of the best business schools under the ministry of hrd government of india you have been associated with it for more than 3 decades can you share with us your journey from lecturer to the dean research of this institute uh, can i share a little background to this how i landed up in niti yes yes surely actually after coming back from us uh, as you had mentioned in the introduction i worked in mm. pune for mm. one year got married mm. came to mumbai after mm. marriage and worked as a lecturer for mumbai as well as sndt universities mm. in those 3 or 4 years i had two sons and i took a break for about 3 years uh, till my uh, younger son started kg going mm. to kg in the kendriya vidyalaya of iit bombay where my husband was teaching in physics department so both mm. of us have been in the same field mm. we had the big fortune of staying in this beautiful campus in pawai for 27 years mm-hmm. but i can tell you the thought of this phd which i had promised to my father was back of my mind mm-hmm. i joined uh, iit bombay in uh, 84 as a project scientist registered for phd and completed the coursework successfully but uh, as luck would have it i had uh, some problems with the guide and mm-hmm. was advised by the you know uh, deputy director to become an institute scholar which again was uh, you know uh, with a rider mm-hmm. had mm-hmm. to qualify through gate gate mm-hmm. had just begun uh, i think it was about 3 or 4 years old then i am mm-hmm. talking about the year 86 Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, just started that time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, you know, there was a gap uh, since I had finished the coursework and uh, uh, appeared for gate. The gate results were to come uh, in the on the thirty first of March. I happened mm-hmm. to see an advertisement uh, for a research associate's post in NIT. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I thought rather that uh, you know, I why not apply? i didn't bother mm-hmm. about whether i was a lecturer first and now how can i apply for a research associate mm-hmm. the main reason behind that was you know the research associates uh, post if i would get i could uh, you know use that research for my doctorate so that mm-hmm. was an additional uh, and uh, niti being on par with all these uh, iims and iits i had mm-hmm. no uh, second thought on that mm-hmm. so i joined niti in 86 mm-hmm. registered for phd again mm-hmm. the same exercise of mm-hmm. choosing a new topic earlier mm-hmm. i was working in iit uh, mm-hmm. in the biogas technology area uh, but here again you know because of the availability of the guide his specialization i chose a new guide new topic and started again with uh, the phd work all the way again yeah okay. all the way again in fact uh, you may ask me why suddenly from biogas to uh, noise mm-hmm. because in the 80s actually early 80s uh, they had started with uh, you know recognition of environmental problems mm-hmm. if you see the history mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, in the mid 80s air and water were the favorite uh, you know for everyone mm-hmm. noise was not at all given any importance so i thought why not i start with uh, noise pollution 
so uh, this is how i joined niti i uh, happened to finish in fact i wrote some articles in marathi mm-hmm. long time back in 87 mm-hmm. if i remember in mm-hmm. kal nirana and uh, uh, I think Oscar Maxine yeah I have read that yes mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so this uh, finally I defended my thesis in 1990 and joined NITI as a lecturer mm-hmm. subsequently of course uh, as uh, you know became the assistant associate etc and a full professor in 2000 and uh, one more thing you may uh, like to know is that i had the honor of being the member of niti board of governors twice that is okay but was the chairperson of almost all important committees including mm-hmm. the challenging very mm-hmm. rare mm-hmm. most standing committee chairperson mm-hmm. held the position of dean programs and consultancy initially mm-hmm. and then retired as dean research so this was the journey mm-hmm. from जर्नी उ it is not that everyone faces these problems once in a while but i can share tell you for sure mm-hmm. this kind of a problem is a common place thing in many of these uh, prestigious institutes mm-hmm. on the contrary many times guides are not only your mentors but are a great support too mm-hmm. i can share a small example you uh, know unique experience i can say um when my father was doing his phd his uh, guide you know he's a phd guide dr tuki and his family they were so nice to us that you nobody will believe mm-hmm. and uh, dr tuki is no more please uh, listen to me carefully i am still in touch with his 94 years old wife my god so for this is very nice years, yeah 50 yeah. years they have maintained that relationship Mm-hmm. and i really feel you know here the country the religion nothing mattered but it's pure human relationship which if mm-hmm. you want you can uh, maintain mm-hmm. and uh, one more small uh, addition to this mm-hmm. uh, in uh, 2010 my son had taken myself my husband my parents who were also there to mm-hmm. penn state to see the you know university where both of us had uh, got our degrees Mm-hmm. and all of us were pleasantly surprised mm-hmm. to see my photo in their living room at the same place as it was kept in 2000 uh, 1972 when we both were there can you believe this no absolutely not but i totally agree to this right because a uh, while pursuing phd since i have also done phd i can tell you for sure that while pursuing phd we normally establish one to one relation with your guide since our phd course is for uh, say four sometimes five years down the line we develop one to one relation and hence it is very important to have a very supportive guide during this tenure even i had a very good rapport with my guide and though she is retired now i am still in contact with her so uh, that is a very uh, nice thing yes. uh, so you can also maintain the relationship for me yes surely after listening yeah after listening to your experience i am also going to do the same thing <laughs> yes uh, now you have been associated with niti for many years can you tell about this institute and various courses that are offered here actually because so, our, yeah. we also have a similar question coming in from one of our viewer uh, sulaksha sarunke from mumbai uh, she is uh, also asking the same question what are the future careers for today's children so probably you can guide them sure sure uh, for the benefit of people in general uh niti right now stands for national institute of industrial engineering mm-hmm. then you may wonder why it is n i t i e right yeah i was about to ask you <laughs> yeah in 1963 when niti was established it was national institute for training in industrial engineering that's how that t is there 
Mm-hmm. And uh, we had that one flagship program uh, called mm-hmm. PGDIE because we are like you know a, a techno managerial interface area. Uh, we are both uh, you know some part of it is like IIMs and some part of it is like IITs. Mm-hmm. So this uh, National Institute of Industrial Engineering had the first program called Postgraduate Diploma in Industrial Engineering and also some training programs for the executives. called uh, they were uh, they used to be called as management development programs mm-hmm. now we have uh, several pg programs and uh, doctor program also mm-hmm. the the very important thing about niti for example mm-hmm. is only mm-hmm. first class graduate engineers are admitted mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. cat or gate whatever is uh, mm-hmm. you know relevant mm-hmm. and uh, training and consultancy services are also uh, offered Mm-hmm. In the industry in the techno mm-hmm. managerial areas mm-hmm. now uh, because sulaksha if i remember her name mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. asked about some so i think uh, mm-hmm. there are there is one course mm-hmm. this post graduate diploma in industrial engineering i would call mm-hmm. it as pgdie mm-hmm. actually has evolved uh, for developing managers with cross functional skills mm-hmm. and uh, for uh, the students the word you know supply chain management is mm-hmm. very very familiar so this mm-hmm. particular program focuses mainly on scm it and systems marketing mm-hmm. finance and hr management mm-hmm. then uh, around uh, early 90s uh, we started with uh, one more program which was considered as uh, equivalent mm-hmm. to mba the first one being equivalent to mtech mm-hmm. the pgdim uh, is rated one of the top class management courses offered by uh you know indian institutions as you mentioned mm-hmm. a significant majority for this program comes uh, with 2 to 3 years of work experience in business okay. and uh, industry okay. we also have one more program mm-hmm. uh, maybe uh, you know uh, mm-hmm. called as pgdi sip okay okay so uh, my one more question is which is related to this that is industrial safety and environment has gained a lot of importance nowadays and many students now opt for further studies in this field can you share with them the various career options that are available in this field actually i think uh, you read my mind i was about mm. to talk about the third program uh, mm-hmm. pgd isem mm. now this uh, stands for postgraduate diploma in industrial safety and environmental management okay now uh, uh, it is a sustainability focused program with emphasis on uh, safety health and environment or uh, you know people call it she mm-hmm. along with operations and general management mm-hmm. now this particular program equips the students with necessary expertise to manage industrial safety and environmental problems needed for mm-hmm. cleaner and safer industrial practices mm. now this program was started in 2001 and mm. i feel very happy and proud to tell you that i was associated with this program uh, from the inception in fact uh, mm. you know i have been the part of this uh, team who started mm. now one more small thing i would like to add about niti in general mm. is uh, niti has a placement record 100% placement record till date and the pg mm-hmm. students are placed in the very good companies and with good packages just mm-hmm. to give you an idea average salaries i just found out uh, you know mm-hmm. from niti uh, mm-hmm. this year ranged from uh, 20 to 22 lakhs per annum for uh, managerial mm-hmm. positions and a little mm-hmm. less for management trainees if at all you know uh, no, everybody doesn't get a managerial position I, you really have given a very useful information to the students who wish to make their career in this field. It is, uh, I think, this will uh, help them to uh, you know make the correct uh, choice. Yeah, if you go to Thank Niti you. website, I think they can really get. They can, uh, yeah, they can get more information on that. Thank you. Thank you, Tai, very much. Uh, now, my another question is with is related to your teaching profession. you have been in this teaching profession for more than 35 years now so over these years you have seen this profession evolving so what changes do you notice in academics now and what would you like to advise the youngsters who wish to choose the same profession i remember 3 or 4 decades back 
we all uh, you know used to use chalks and the black boards mm -hmm. basically back yeah. boards and later on i think uh, white boards also came into existence mm -hmm. then using the you know then there was a, an era where uh, we used to call it ohp overhead projectors overhead projectors and uh, you know transparencies i remember having made Hundreds of transparencies yes, for all the had, Yeah, even I had and, made all my presentations on OHPs that yeah. time during my PhDs and all. But yes. uh, didn't know how to dispose them off. You know, when <laughs> I retired, because there were hundreds of them, and then uh, mm -hmm. because they became redundant when the PPTs came, PowerPoint presentations yes. came. Yes, and yes. of course uh, now they have access to ready-made material. You don't have to do anything. in fact that is a little sad that uh, the habit of reading books has become almost redundant mm. so the change in this uh, education system or whatever has uh, come with uh, many advantages as well as disadvantages you asked me the second part i think uh, about choosing this profession yes yes choosing this I, profession i would say a big yes mm. but provided you are uh, really passionate about teaching mm -hmm. not just to join uh, this as a profession mm -hmm. because this is one profession i can guarantee that gives you immense satisfaction when your mm -hmm. students excel occupy high positions and mm -hmm. acknowledge your contribution in their life no mm -hmm. jealousy no competition mm -hmm. i get so many messages on teachers day like i did today and also on guru purnima mm -hmm. believe me mansi the happiness that you get when you read this cannot mm -hmm. be measured in any currency mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, this profession also mm -hmm. keeps the teachers young mm -hmm. if not you know physically mm -hmm. maybe at heart mm -hmm. and the mind mm -hmm. because every year you get a fresh batch Mm. So you see to uh, new faces and you interact with them so correct yeah. so that's uh, that's yeah. very interesting so mm -hmm. i am a little worried about the current mm -hmm. situation because mm -hmm. i don't really know what the future has in store for these kids mm -hmm. for whom mm -hmm. everything is almost virtual right. because of the circumstances yeah i am just praying to god that uh, you know they go to the schools physically very mm -hmm. soon and play on the grounds mingle with their friends and learn in uh, reading books also yeah since i am in the same profession now tai i totally agree with your point mm -hmm. i even feel uh, what you have said is correct <laughs> so in connection to this further i would like to know from you what do you feel should be done to retain phd's or postdoc aspirants in india a very very uh, difficult question but i think i'll give you a very short answer uh which may sound politically mm. correct we need to provide proper infrastructure resources to these aspirants so that you know they don't think of leaving india maybe a little uh, distant dream in the current situation but with a strong political will and support and non interference giving the mm. freedom to the students so it is not impossible impossible yeah. yes yes truly truly say even i feel the same thing it is absolutely right hope so let's see what happens in future yes so, <laughs> till now we were discussing about your educational and professional journey but since apan jevda kai bollo atta paryanta ek gosht hai ji satal majha dokyat yet hoti can i ask you that question it is bit different but i think uh, you are the best person to answer this i don't this know is... whether i am going to be the best person but you can ask me all those questions you have in mind no problem uh, this, this, this is uh, related to gender equity oh my god we always hear different people especially women voicing over gender equity on various platforms though we keep on hearing it quite often we see that practically it is not followed very few organizations probably uh, one or two out of 10 accept women leadership how do you look at it and what are your views on this actually uh, this is a very common problem i don't know it's going to be there it was there it is there and it is going to be there for some more time maybe mm. institutional mindsets i would say are the most mm. significant barrier and are a major reason 
that we don't see many women at the top levels of leadership mm. often women are uh, limited yeah in their numbers because uh, people you know uh, don't even g- give them an opportunity to prove themselves because of this bias mm. Mm. i was plain simple fortunate simply fortunate that i possibly got many of these uh, you know positions mm. that i occupy now this reminds me of something which all of us have viewed or all many of us knew or rather know about mrs sudha murthy mm. because she had shared it in kbc also when she came uh, as a guest mm. in 1974 you know sudha murthy was preparing to go to uh, uh, study in us but uh, then he she came across a telco job vacancy advertisement which mentioned that only men can apply <clears throat> oh. she wrote to uh, jrd tata on a postcard simply mm. jrd tata and mumbai mm. and it reached it reached oh. okay. and uh, you know complaining about the gender discrimination at telco saying that only mm. men can apply so now uh, this policy she was very furious about and she also stated that uh, women can uh, you know work better than men mm-hmm. if they are not given the chance how would they prove themselves in mm-hmm. this context so uh, i remember one more thing uh, in this context uh, mm-hmm. niti had a very wonderful audio visual oh. or rather audio mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. Uh, which was uh, called, i mean rather uh, named how to learn management from your wife very and interesting it was, title it was yes and it was a very popular uh, film and mm-hmm. made by uh, management guru shri sharu rangnekar okay that actually really nicely substantiates uh, this statement uh, that mrs murthy made mm-hmm. subsequently jrd tata the great man changed the policy mm-hmm. and mrs murthy became the first woman engineer in telco so so therefore what i would say is that the root to true gender equality should be by fixing the system not the women some little yeah. ray of hope i can uh, i can recall one mm-hmm. uh, i had read recently uh, um, according to some uh, report women in uh, business 2021 it said that india ranks third in the world with 39% women working in senior management positions as against the global average of 31% mm. this possibly signals the changing outlook of indian business towards uh, you know working women so there is some hope let us hope things change yeah, yeah surely i hope this percentage of working women at senior position will further increase in the coming years let's hope yeah true and uh, thai we also uh, have a similar question coming in from our viewer uh, mr mahabaleshwar naik from thani he had also asked the same question which is which uh, you have just now answered has the empowerment of women in social and extra curricular activities been expe- uh, accepted by men and the society share your views and experience on it so i think it's the same answer can go for uh, that too yeah i would just add one more thing i think mm-hmm. for this change to come we uh, parents mothers mm-hmm. i think we we have to raise our children without mm-hmm. a bias towards uh, gender right okay. if mm-hmm. everybody is given this understanding and mm-hmm. uh, you know then things can change so okay. parents responsibility too yes which we all should remember since we are in that phase now <laughs> correct absolutely absolutely thank you very much uh, now my another question is uh, nirima tai we have always seen you as one of the most successful women who has been who has beautifully crafted her career and also made a place for herself with this in my mind i wish to ask you one one thing nowadays raising even a single child has become so difficult but back in those days taking care of two children raising them also fulfilling all family responsibilities as well as defining your career so successfully must have been very difficult how did you manage on both the fronts mansi i belong to a very uh, unique generation 
Yeah, I, I, I will just uh, want to interrupt you in between because we have a similar question coming in from uh, Mangala Naik Karwar. She, she has asked, how do you manage the professional life and personal life? So I think uh, now you can answer. So she will, her, her doubts are also clear. Okay. Uh, I'm sure she is younger to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can uh, say that I belong to a very unique, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. generation. Sandwich between the previous generations, more or mm -hmm. less confined to the four walls, mm -hmm. mostly non-working and mm -hmm. with societal restrictions. Mm -hmm. And the current generation that is reasonably independent financially or otherwise. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like working in three shifts like the actors. Okay. Mm -hmm. They get paid in crores. I was not. Oh. Life was tough. Of course, life was tough. And it is still a uh, tough life. My activities were done with uh, family duties performed very religiously. It was mm. like finishing all the household work, putting mm. the kids to sleep, mm. and then mm. starting preparing for classes next day. Or preparing for the exams, like, you know, I, as I told you, while doing the coursework, I had to uh, face mm. the exams. Mm. Or while uh, I uh, prepared for GATE. So, uh, it was like, you know, I start uh, studying after everything uh, is over around 11.30 and sleep around 2.30. Again, get up at 6.30 in the morning for the next day. So, there were, so that there were no complaints from the family and also a guilt feeling for myself, which I think many of us, uh, you know, go through unnecessarily. That we feel, oh, I was not able to attend to my child or I was not able to do something for the child. Now, this for a timetable, as I said, especially that 11.30 to 2.30 timetable, I followed, uh, uh, you know, while studying for GATE. And month of this great Indian circus helped me qualify through GATE. Uh, Fortunately, I have not faced many serious uh, or any serious challenges for that matter in my work life. This may be because of the field that I was working in. And also, I would say, uh, because I kept on adjusting to the family needs without worrying about positions, continuation of service for pension benefits, mm -hmm. like many other male colleagues uh, have done. And mm -hmm. this is why I mentioned to you that I didn't mind uh, you know, accepting the RS position in mm -hmm. NITI when mm -hmm. I thought, you know, it was enough. Enough was enough mm -hmm. at uh, mm -hmm. IIT. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so now my another question is, we have always heard that behind every successful man, there is a woman. But according to me, behind every successful woman, there is a family. So, uh, what are your views on this? Ani, azun ek gosht hai ki bhotek mi ha jasa vichar karti hai, tasa aplya karte khub sare viewers bhotek tasa vichar karta hai. Because I am seeing one more question which has come from Sangeeta Pawar Thani. She has also asked about family support. Tumala kasa merala, how did you manage growing your children as well as studying and job? But tumala husband support, in-laws support kiti hota. So I think uh, all the ladies go on the similar lines of thinking. So uh, now you can tell me your views on this. Because they face the music all the time. Yeah, correct. <laughs> so uh, when you say that a man is successful, there is a woman mm. behind. And that mm. woman gives support by taking over all the possible responsibilities and at mm. times sacrificing her own career, which mm. is a fact. When a woman is successful, mm. the family is with her, mm. but the progress is, and the progress is also not blocked, but the family responsibilities may not be necessarily shared, especially mm. here in India. Mm. This may not be the case with the present generation and I am happy mm. to see that. But it was definitely true for my generation, bound by societal norms. That was also uh, in an important reason. I can say that without the support received from my immediate family and others, things definitely would have been very difficult for me too. Karan, uh, have question which I am again a mazek intention of that. Ask this question very intentionally because I have also done my PhD and that too after marriage. 
so pursuing higher study after marriage requires a lot of support from your family especially from your in-laws so i was very lucky to get that support from my in-laws mr uh, late mr ramda sai desai and mrs mangala sai desai as well as still till today from my husband dr sandeep sai desai so i feel without their support it would not have been possible for me to complete my phd in stipulated time so this support is very important if you really want to go ahead with your career that is true with the indian society but you have to yeah very very nice to hear all that i hope many take the clue from and uh, <laughs> support their uh, you know daughters yeah. in law daughters uh, in whatever way they can they can uh, then how did you balance work and family life so successfully many of us want to uh, hear this uh well uh, we both as parents made some mm-hmm. small adjustments so that we could practice what we preached Mm-hmm. at home uh, believe me we didn't take a cable connection till my younger son finished his 12th mm-hmm. nowadays it's going to be very difficult because the mm-hmm. children would not even agree will, yeah children so will I never think, agree to this i think the credit also goes to my children who uh, listen to me the task master at home being a teacher occasionally i did attend national conferences because they were like you know within india and seminars too but avoided attending international conferences till our younger son graduated in engineering by then my elder son also had post graduated so and also i never took my home problems to work but being a teacher i had to do work for my classes at home so some small small adjustments here and there uh, were made to make it make it better Mm-hmm. uh that you have highlighted a very important point here ah huh? making adjustments i feel if both the parents mutually understand and adjust they both can fulfill their job responsibilities as well as raise their family successfully so i think this is the point which we all know but a of parents in this phase should understand this and should you uh, know uh, should follow it rather yeah so it's uh, very nice to give this advice amala tumcha kadun ek ek itka chhan advices milta hai itna thank you thank you very much for this go he agdi lahan san goshte sat he kala r kona jast nuksan jay na ani tumka fayda jata ghara sha ani ani tonda ne ek ulai che ki ami are tumhi tv pale nakat ani ami ta serial pale che जर्नी yes why not in fact i would like to share my experience so that it benefits uh, you know many uh, women mm. more the women mm. now this was the possibly the most difficult challenge in my life mm-hmm. which uh, happened in uh, 2010 mm. about 11 years back mm. uh, as uh, we have seen so far you know i used to work a lot like 17 18 hours a day for years together Mm-hmm. and the uh, uh, crux of the thing was like you know trying to do justice to all the roles i performed personally as well as professionally mm-hmm. maybe that was uh, um, you know the culprit mm-hmm. i feel that accumulated stress of all this somehow you know takes a toll on your uh, mm-hmm. uh, health or life or whatever mm-hmm. uh as i said i have no hesitation i had just come uh, from us after visiting mm-hmm. my son in 2010 mm-hmm. in march and uh, without any any uh, symptoms or any problems whatsoever mm-hmm. i was uh, you know diagnosed with uh, breast cancer mm-hmm. thankfully it had just crossed first stage mm-hmm. so um, i made a trip to uh, tata memorial center because i trust tatas more than anybody else 
<laughs> I underwent oper operation, chemotherapy, radiation, hormone replacement therapy at the same hospital. Ah, uh, this was all very sudden and shocking. But I neither cried nor told my parents. It's a little strange to hear, but this uh, this was the fact. Only my husband, son, daughter-in-law, and my siblings knew about it. And I'm, uh, as uh, uh, you can see, I'm a very strong-willed person, yeah, and look at everything in a very positive way. Mm -hmm. I simply kept on counting my blessings as against all that could have happened and made things worse. Mm -hmm. For example, like the very fact that it happened to me, I'm in Mumbai, I'm uh, you know near Tata's or uh, good hospitals, financially mm -hmm. stable, family mm -hmm. support is there. So there were I uh, recall about seventeen of them I had listed down. And wrote on a piece oh. of paper so that you know oh. I realize mm -hmm. uh, the uh, importance of it. Mm -hmm. Now, in such situations, having a strong family and financial support, as I mentioned, is very uh, important, and I had mm -hmm. it. But I would like to tell you one more thing: the patient being composed mm -hmm. keeps the family in a better condition because I have seen it uh, almost everywhere. the patient is in distress the family becomes you know even more uh, uh, distressed mm -hmm. so uh, if possible try to keep yourself composed so that overall family structure is slightly uh, in a better shape mm -hmm. i can tell you one more very interesting thing um, i had the first chemo and on the second day of uh, this chemotherapy session i uh, went and uh, took a class for 3 hours in niti mm -hmm. because i had oh, committed mm -hmm. to a colleague which was uh, you know 2 uh, weeks back mm -hmm. now this is one side of it that i did something which uh, because the hair was still intact mm -hmm. after it uh, goes after yeah it goes normally yeah, yeah. yes after, after the chemotherapy so, so this was mm -hmm. possible but uh, for um, uh, fear of losing hair during the trip i cancelled my international conference which was mm -hmm. to be held in uh, sydney mm -hmm. now after the chemo one month i used to go to the institute in the morning do the work there and then go to the hospital for uh, radiation mm -hmm. radiation again was followed by hrt or hormone replacement therapy for about 7 years and uh, you know uh, now i'm uh, and as you can see i am except for the maybe sparse hair i am hale and hearty the dc changed me externally but my spirits never got dampened mm. i held important positions in niti and outside attended meetings and uh, you know as you can see mm. things are much better now they mm. call us survivors okay just uh, mm. to add to this सो आता हाँ वो संगो इच्छिता हम गए लास भाषेत मगर सगड़ी बहिनियाँ नो कि वह सगड़ी बायला नो आने तो हम गए कुटुम अतले जितले लोग असा एक गोष्ट लक्ष्य दवरा अत कैंसर ही सुधा गोष्ट की तो एकदम अनकॉमन राधा उल ना ते अगदी दे से द स्टैटिस्टिक्स सेज दैट यू नो सेवेन आउट ऑफ Uh, maybe hundred people, rather ladies, are getting this disease. Mm -hmm. And how acute cancer is such that if the average years are detected, then it is hundred percent worse than usual. And in such cases, it is worse than usual that you have to test regularly. Can you understand? The Durga Van is the case. It is one of the most dangerous cancers. And as how a life lesson you have to give to us. तश्मन भीर सारे कहीं ना तसेच कि उल्लार बरच बाकी गोष्टी आसा बिचार करोना कितने त्रास दिल आसा सो डोंट फियर यू नो एवरीथिंग इफ यू नो डिटेक्टेड एट एन अर्ली स्टेज कैन बी परफेक्टली ऑल राइट अपने सीमिलर क्वेश्चन संतोष राणे नवी मुंबई कड़ी 
Uh, if possible, please tell us how you fought back your illness with sheer strong willpower. So uh, you have rightly said you have emphasized on strong willpower. Even I have experienced such a thing in my house with my mother. I can say that in 2008, my mother was detected with ovarian cancer. When detected, she was already in third stage, and all doctors had given a maximum time of eight to ten months. But even in that condition, she did not lose her hope. She got herself operated, followed by several chemotherapy sessions, and came out of it with flying colors. It was only because of a strong determination not to give up. She fought this disease and lived with us for ten more years. So that is the thing which I learned. I got a lesson that with strong willpower, you can fight any odds that come in your life. So Absolutely. this is very yeah. I fully agree with you, and I feel you know people uh, should take these examples. Mm -hmm. and become a little uh, strong mm -hmm. you know when it comes to such uh, problems uh what are your guru mantras to young mothers and also for young women at the start of their career yeah now i have become a grand mother so mm -hmm. a very old mother too so for my young mothers i would uh, just say that if you chosen to be a mother then try to give the child a secure childhood which goes a long way in making her or him a good human being prepare them to accept not only success but failure too that is very very important what you see around in the you know uh, around you is very very uh, sad more than anything else teach them to respect the other human beings irrespective of age gender occupation or position and also to have gratitude Mm. i would say mothers or parents for that matter should lead by example because actions speak a lot more than preaching correct yes yes never forget mm. that children observe you and imbibe mm. of course as i said uh, uh, just now it goes without saying that this is true for both the parents mm. for the young boys or girls most important things to remember are clarity of thought i think i have uh, very uh, in the you have rightly the yes you have shown that have. yes yes so this clarity of thought mm -hmm. helps you make better decisions if you know what exactly want then mm -hmm. i think you are not in a dilemma mm -hmm. then perseverance ek kaam hata getle ani son dile tashi jaun kai upyog na there is no escape uh, from hard work but you can do it smartly i think the mm. current generation does that very smartly mm. because they have all the possible facilities uh, to do so mm. now one more thing is time as you know time is very precious once gone it's not going to come back so use it very very effectively and judiciously ah uh, okay. one more uh, thing which can make or break situations as well as relationships is communication communication we all know how to communicate mm. but we don't communicate effectively mm. we make some mistake in what is to be said when it is to be said where it mm. is to be said or whom it is to be said and the very fact that how you say it so learn to communicate effectively mm. and uh, one more thing normally uh, we say you know uh, learn from your mistakes improve i would go a little further and say learn not only from your mistakes but others mistakes too that is free of cost yeah <laughs> yes so, and uh, one more very important thing is try to give back to the society whatever you can in whatever form some service some whatever uh, that you can give to society because you are here because of this very society Mm -hmm. and uh, last but not the least mm -hmm. remember life is very precious mm -hmm. value it uh, that you have given a very valuable advice to all the young mothers so uh, i think we all, we, we should definitely follow this मला तरी वाटतं मी ना एक पेपर पेन्सिल घेऊन बसायला पाहिजे होती टू राईट ऑल द ऍडवायसेस सो दॅट आय कॅन कीप नो सीईंग ऍट इट डेली 
अगं इतक्या वर्षांची तपश्चर्या आहे आणि आता ते कुणाला तरी सांगायची संधी हे किती महत्वाचं आहे काही काही बेसिक डिफरन्सेस आहे लाईक युएस सिस्टम फॉलोज फायव्ह प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर इयर्स फॉर एलिमेंटरी मिडल अँड हायस्कूल रिस्पेक्टिव्ह राईट and then you know four years for uh, for what they term as graduation and another two for uh, sorry uh, for the term as under graduation and another two years for the graduation which like you know i did ms that was my graduation according to their system okay. whereas here we have the 10 plus 2 plus 3 right for most of the streams and uh, four years for engineer <laughs> that is one basic difference then the second one is the uh, with respect to the student uh, rather uh, to teachers or rather teachers to student ratio in us it is uh, it doesn't exceed 1 is to 30 in majority of the classes but here even with the provisions highlighted in rt act you can say that you know it can go as high as 1 is to 80 or sometimes even 1 is to 100 which is you know very very uh, uh, bad i would say in public schools in us they have very good infrastructure and technological facilities available to the teachers all of us know what uh, problems we face in many schools here except for all those international schools or you know uh, the, uh, other schools now one more uh, observation uh i can uh, talk about is the rigidity in our system mm-hmm. that seems tends to be science student centric but this okay. year's news uh, mm-hmm. gives a little different picture maybe mm-hmm. you know because there are more students going in for arts uh, system mm-hmm. one more uh, the very important thing is uh, that uh, in us they give emphasis to creative innovative and original ideas as compared mm-hmm. to the generally you know seen reproduction of what we were taught in the class uh, mm. in our uh, setup and uh, one positive thing about our setup is that uh, teachers in india get much better paid and mm. the teaching profession itself receives a lot of respect as mm. compared to the years this is my personal observation okay mm-hmm. uh now with your four decades of experience in teaching what changes have you seen in the way we teach and the changes in the way we learn manse in the olden days we used to learn in a classroom as i did in school and college yeah attending yes. we were attending all classes mm. making notes revising mm. several times before the exam all the more yeah i feel when i remember all those things yeah i feel whatever we learned with those limited resources and gadgets mm. decades ago is still fresh in mind like mm. maybe the old hindi songs which mm. were melodious mm. and those were the times when the parents and grandparents were teaching the kids mm. now i am learning many things from my 7 8 year old grandchildren who are mm. so techno savvy and mm. now google sir has uh, become the you know favorite teacher of everybody Yes, true. So that technology has changed the way we live. Mm. All that you need is a computer and the Wi-Fi. You can learn when and where it is convenient to you. Most of the things have become virtual. Mm. With the changing needs of the student, even you know the role of the teacher is changing significantly. For mm. better or worse, I don't know. Mm. yeah true true i agree with this guy because technology has really brought many changes in our life nowadays children are not interested in reading books i can say this uh, since i have two daughters and they 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 sometimes survey mala why try to read books when we can get everything from the internet so today's generation is happier in its virtual world rather than connecting to people i don't know if uh, we should call it as a progress of humans due to advanced technology or deterioration i am really confused with this yes ek divas asa yeil ki kadachit amchi jamat sudha extinct hoil 
टीचर्स असे लागणारच नाहीत कारण सगळं नाही सो फार वी हॅव बिन डिस्कसिंग एज्युकेशन टीचिंग करिअर पाथ सगळं थोडस सिरियस नोट्स वर आपण बोलत होतो आतापर्यंत बट नाव आय वॉन्ट टू नो समथिंग अबाउट एक्स्ट्रा करिक्युलर ऍक्टिव्हिटीज Uh, you have said earlier that you had been interested in various extracurricular activities and i mala viewers kadun pan khup sare viewers kadun a similar message yetana disto hai they are also very interested to know this so how important are extracurricular activities and hobbies both as a student and as a professional what do you think uh, at every every stage of life mm-hmm. i feel these activities and hobbies they act like stress busters Mm. right now the world has become all the more stressful mm. so uh, having curricular activities or hobbies is very very crucial for each and every individual mm. Mm. and one more thing they add indirectly you know to in developing your uh, personality especially for say for example music mm. it uh, uh, according to me it adds value to your uh, personality development mm. whether it is swimming or art craft wow. instrumental music gardening it can give you the pleasure and it doesn't really need much investment correct so uh, everybody should uh, follow some kind of hobby hobby correct and we have heard that you have won many quiz competitions on tv shows can you tell us about that yeah i think we have been uh, interacting for quite some time uh, mm-hmm. my uh, you know Uh, audience should not get very bored so i'll make it mm. as short as possible mm. i did win game shows on tv mm. uh, sarv dhamaka india pehchan and uh, wheel of fortune mm-hmm. uh, all of them were on uh, if i am not mistaken the uh, the first two were on uh, dd mm. when i didn't have the cable and mm. wheel of fortune on sony mm. uh, and of course i won several prizes I love uh, my love for quizzes. Possibly made me venture into it. Sir, the Marcos telecast all over India. KBC probably didn't like me, and also I didn't try to uh, you know follow it up for. Details. Yeah, you answered. Yeah. You answered my question. Because me, you mal atta se vicharna rote ek tu bhi KBC mein dekha nahi try ke lo, and you gave that answer. माझा चेहरा नाही आवडला अमित जींना असं नसेल रिझन ऑल्सो सो इट इज रिअली अमेझिंग कारण आफ्टर सो मेनी अवर्स ऍट वर्क यू स्टील टूक आउट टाइम टू फ्रॉम युअर बिझी शेड्यूल टू डू वॉट यू लव्ह दॅट इज दिस इज रिअली इन्स्पायरिंग अजून एक गोष्ट जी मी लिहून ठेवायला हवी विच आय शुड लर्न फ्रॉम यू रेदर दिस इज व्हेरी नाईस देवर लाईक स्पस्टर्स माय ग्रँडसन यु नो इन माय ऍबसेन्स वॉज आज बाय हिज मदर वाय ही लाईक्स मी ही वॉज हार्डली फोर देन four or mm. four and half and he told her he likes me because i tell him what is right and what is wrong mm. the answer was most unexpected but a very pleasant surprise for me mm-hmm. making mm-hmm. it a golden mm-hmm. moment okay and uh, what is an uh, which is one emotional moment with students my god there are too many i will tell you one recent one just before the pandemic uh, Uh, you know a student of mine uh, from the mm-hmm. first batch in 2001 now in his early 40s holding a very senior position in his organization he was with his team for a presentation and i was on the uh, expert panel uh, judging that uh, competition mm-hmm. uh, i just happened to uh, go out of the you know uh, hall and he uh, waiting there he saw me believe me he this uh, f- man in uh, 40s he just came and uh, you know we went down to seek my blessings in front of his colleagues oh. or subordinates <laughs> and uh, there have been quite a few such moments and i think they uh, you know it yeah it is really touching it is very touching moment yeah 
now who are your role models my parents and uh, my uncles you know oh. mm-hmm. uh, who are like father figures for me mm-hmm. they they have been my uh, you know role models and mm-hmm. now it is mrs sudha murthy dr abdul kalam i mean apj abdul kalam and mm-hmm. uh, shri ratan tata okay guru and teacher is there a difference what do you think according to me yes teacher teaches but guru changes your life mm. i strongly believe mother is your first guru mm. guiding you to sail through life smoothly and mm. both parents are your first teachers correct and what is the guiding principle of your life aha uh-huh. uh, when i was in school maybe in ninth standard mm-hmm. i had come across a quote from aesop's fables mm. which read uh i cried because i had no shoes till i saw a child who had no feet mm. i kept that as a guiding principle throughout my life and what is your mantra of success keep counting your blessings and life will be better correct i agree to this because rather than merely complaining we should make special efforts to appreciate good things in your life that really helps you to progress in your life so this is this is very important yes uh now here are some quick questions which uh, we would like to hear from you some answers on it an author that inspires you to write sudha murthy a tv serial that you cannot miss you could have guessed it kaun yeah. banega karodpati correct favorite konkri dish are baba kasle prashn vicharlo सोला कडी आणि तळील नुसत्यात आणि गरमा गरम शीत माका बी तसलेच आवडता शीत आणि बांगड्या कडी मेळा बाकी काही नका मका अँड युअर फेवरेट मुव्ही काबुली वाला विच आय हॅड सीन वेन आय वॉज अ व्हेरी स्मॉल किड इट इज अ व्हेरी फेमस मुव्ही दो आय हॅव नॉट सीन इट बट आय हॅव रेड अबाउट इट आय नो दॅट कंट्री यू वुड लाईक टू व्हिजिट अगेन actually i have already fulfilled that wish of seeing when is the second time before i die you know but uh, now i mean the list is new zealand for the first time uh one favorite song that makes you feel like a teen dil hai chhota sa choti si aasha yeah. and one thing that you would like about karwa serene beauty yes i, I even i agree our karwa is very beautiful then about maharashtra mumbai life and about india everything incredible india as we all say Absolutely. yes true okay. and then finally a last question and very important question if not teaching what would dr nilima naik have been known for see born in a family of mostly teachers i never ever aspired for anything else i think that's the reason teaching is called a noble profession even our formal president dr apj abdul kalam had once said teaching is a very noble profession that shapes your character caliber and future of an individual if people remember me as a good teacher that will be the biggest honor to me so that is that is really nice then we have one very important question which is coming from one of our viewer uh, satish gaukar from madgaon uh, he is he had asked a question related to your uh, you know prof- profession uh, or uh, the work which you have done uh, he is asking is work in challenges to environment taken seriously or just a topic of academic interest what can you say on this uh actually uh, very few people have taken it very seriously let me be very open and frank about it mm-hmm. but these days i see a very positive change uh, because this topic uh, mm-hmm. is uh, taught in the uh, schools at a very very small uh, rather young age and mm-hmm. the small young students are so very mm-hmm. particular about saving the environment that's mm-hmm. a very positive change which can go a long way as mm-hmm. i told you in the 80s you know mid 80s when this whole uh, movement started things were not really taken seriously say for as i quoted uh, noise as an example 
Subsequently, there have been lots of work done, but uh, now I see a ray of hope in the uh, younger generation. I hope this okay. answers uh, this question. Yeah, uh, uh, we have one special guest, Prakash, uh, Mr. Prakash Rani, who had given our last webinar. I think he wants to ask some question to you. I hope he doesn't ask me very difficult question. Is there a... Am I audible? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes. Uh, Pushpa, uh, it was great listening to you. Uh, <laughs> and uh, there are many things which I learned now, which I did not know about you. So as, as if it was not enough for me to be awed by your achievements, uh, today you added a uh, substantially large list of reasons as to why we should be further awed by your achievements. <laughs> Yeah. So having said that, I mean, most of the questions uh, uh, which uh, my wife, uh, uh, Supriya Suju also wanted to know about, I have been mm -hmm. asked, and they are predominantly about the way you fought back from, uh, uh, from the, as you call it, the survivor, the way you decided to go back, uh, go to US 50 years back. Mm -hmm. And if, if somebody listens to that, I mean, we will, we will have to take efforts to uh, make them believe it. Mm, I mean, that somebody from Kokan Marada community would be traveling to USA something 15 years back. So uh, the, uh, during this uh, chat today, uh, most of the questions uh, which uh, have been... I, I have one uh, uh, peculiar uh, uh, question. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I find uh, it a little uh, challenging uh, to adjust. I find it people who have relatively higher uh, intelligence, if I may say so, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, in quantitatively little higher IQ are mm -hmm. not extremely good in adjusting their wavelength uh, across uh, uh, the kind of uh, state of the students which they have got. So when you teach, uh, I'm sure you come across a wide range of uh, 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 IQ, uh, uh, IQs when you teach. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how easy was it uh, to uh, adjust to this uh, completely different uh, levels of intelligence while you are trying to explain a point of view or while you are trying to explain uh, any concept or anything that is important to the students. How did you manage with your level of IQ to adjust to the lowest IQ uh, to ensure that uh, even that person understands not only your student in your life, this question is not about your students, this is more about your life. Uh, this I find a, ch a challenge which comes up as to mm -hmm. uh, to be able to move, uh, to be able to move across the uh, entire bandwidth of low IQ to high IQ. I hope my question is clear. Absolutely. Uh, one thing I must say: uh, this particular problem of adjusting, or rather, uh, you know, uh, with the students, uh, very rarely occur because uh, the admission criteria themselves make sure that they are, you know, uh, very good uh, with a very good IQ. But I would like to answer this question, Prakash, uh, for my experience in the general life. Here, what happens is, uh, I don't know whether you like it or not, but women are born with more of empathy. And I agree. Uh, I agree. Uh, you, people, you people have more of an analytical mind. I know, left brain, right brain, I don't want to uh, make it very long, uh, this thing. But uh, uh, most of these problems, because of the tolerance that we have and the empathetic view that we uh, have. And uh, well, also one more thing which comes to my mind is we can manage our egos. Ego management also is a key to all these problems which can come. So I think uh, wherever required, you can use all these uh, different techniques but uh, being in somebody else's shoes and trying to understand and also looking at things uh, holistically, as I, I mentioned uh, while we were uh, talking, and in an integrated way is the key to all these uh, you know, problems. Perfect, perfect. So what you're saying is uh, uh, not allowing you go to ego to sit over the brain and being empathetic. I think that is, that is a, an extremely well said, extremely well said, a good thing to learn. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you, Prakash. Uh, Dr. Marcy, please yes. uh, go through the questions in the chat. 
Yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, one more question from Dr. Koya Rani from Belgaum. Uh, he wanted he wanted to know something about noise pollution and the work that is been done in this. Can you uh, just just answer this question? Uh, I would uh, suggest that uh, you know because this is a, a question which is very specific question. Uh, mm -hmm. He can get in touch with me. Uh, because I think you will be sharing my email ID or phone number and we can talk at length. Right now also there are lots of studies being done but mm -hmm. the overall movement about the environment mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. has been masked because of these corona problems. I mean if I may say so. Okay. So you can very well get in touch with me Dr. Koher Nayak. I will be too happy to share whatever little I know about uh, this field. Does that answer uh -huh. you? I think uh, that might have answered this question. Uh, then there is one more question, which is again coming from Abhileshwar Naik Thani. He had given four names of uh, uh, four uh, names of important personalities, and he wanted to know a role model among them. Uh, first name is Ahilya Bai, Savitri Bai Phule, Margaret Thatcher, and Indira Gandhi. Who is your role model among them? Savitri by Phule, for sure. Correct. Followed by Ahilya Bai. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to go beyond two. Yes, that's, that is a good answer. Uh, and I think most of the questions which I have come here has been covered in our uh, no, discussion. These are all familiar questions uh, which we had already discussed. So... It was really a pleasure talking to you, Nilimatai, and it was very nice to have you here, especially on the Teacher's Day. The journey of your life is really incredible. Your dedication to work, your way of managing responsibilities, facing challenges, all this will definitely serve as a guiding principle for our younger generation. It is highly motivating and inspirational, I must say. You have set an amazing example and taught us all that there is no limit to what a woman can achieve if she believes in herself. Absolutely. Thank you, Mansi, for this wonderful conversation we had today. I really enjoyed it. I would also like to thank uh, Konkan Maratha Entrepreneurs for giving me this opportunity. For a retired professor like me, such opportunities are like, you know, rejuvenating vitamin, vitamin supplements. So I would say keep up this good work so that more and more people join you and get benefited. Lots of blessings for your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nilimatai. Yeah. Happy Teacher's Day, Manta. Thank you, Thank you Nilimatai, for spending your valuable time with us. Finally, I would like to thank all our viewers for watching us show so patiently. Soon we will be back with yet another very interesting topic. Till then, be in touch, stay healthy and stay safe. Thank you and Namaste. Namaste.